People often say, well, Newton discovered gravity when an apple fell on his head. He didn't really discover gravity. I mean, he wasn't the first to realize that things fall down. But what he did realize when that apple fell on his head, when he was spending a lot of time thinking underneath the apple trees in his orchard in Wolfsfort Manor, which is near Grantham, you can go visit it. What he realized when the apple fell on his head was that everything attracts everything else. But what Isaac Newton did realize when the apple fell on his head was it's the same force that causes the apple to fall to Earth as which causes the Earth to orbit the Sun and indeed the Moon to orbit the Earth and all of those planets in the solar system to be orbiting in the systems they do. So he called this, this was his law of universal gravitation, the law of everything attracting everything else and being governed by this inverse square law where the force is proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So it's an inverse square law and it follows very similar laws to any other radial field and you can draw it in the same way. But the difference between that and electric fields or magnetic fields is gravity field, as far as we can tell, is always attractive. So there's no form of repulsion in gravity. Newton's law of universal gravitation took careful consideration of Kepler's laws to come to his conclusions. He was able to gather some data and he was able to figure out this law based on Kepler's laws. But it wasn't really until a hundred or so years later when Henry Cavendish did an experiment that they could really test this theory out. And when we've got a proportional law, then there's, it also can be stated that this is equal to this times by some constant. So they wanted to measure this constant, this universal gravity constant, this uh, constant of universal gravitation, if you like. The experiment to measure that constant was done by Henry Cavendish just towards the end of the 1700s. And what he essentially had was a giant kind of swing, a torsion balance, which could twist. And it had two massive balls on the end of a stick, and that stick could twist. And then stationary on the floor, he had two even larger balls, okay? And this, this was um, in, in a kind of building the size of a cathedral, so it's a massive experiment. Those two stationary balls would attract the smaller balls by gravity. And in measuring the amount that it rotated, he could actually measure that universal constant, which we call big G, the constant of universal gravitation. I think it's a great experiment for thinking about how to accurately measure very, very small things. What he had on the end of that kind of stick was a very, very long um, pointer, very, very long marker, such that that very small, very slight movements of that torsion balance, he was able to measure accurately by them being kind of amplified by having a much longer marker, a lot, much longer pointer. I mentioned in my last video on electrical fields that gravity fields are really useful for understanding some important quantities about fields. So we're going to start with something really familiar that we do understand, this idea of gravitational potential energy, mgh, or in other words, work done is force times distance, gravity force times distance. So now if we take Newton's law of gravitation and we think about that as the force that it is, it's mg, and we multiply it by the height that we are. That height from mgh is the same as the value of r, it's the height above the centre of gravity of the larger mass. In other words, one of the R's cancel and we now have a new equation for gravitational potential energy that you're used to. This is going to allow us then to define what a gravitational potential is. So we take out one of the masses, M2, which is the object being attracted to the larger mass, uh, by just dividing by the mass. And you get this equation for gravitational potential equals gm1 over R. So for me, this helps me understand really what a potential is. It's the kind of property at that point in a field, which if multiplied by whatever is attracted by the field, in this case, the mass, gives us an energy. So potential energy. Mm -hmm. Now, you must also remember there is a minus in this, uh, this equation for gravity because gravity is always attractive. I know that really helps me understand what a potential is. You know, this point here has a potential, and at the minute that potential is not doing anything, it's until I put a mass there that that becomes a potential energy and something can happen. We can also use Newton's law of universal gravitation to help us define what a gravitational field strength is. And here we'll start from our equation for weight, which is m times g, or you'll know it as f equals ma. So gravitational field strength is the same as gravitational acceleration, of course. So if we want to start with Newton's law of universal gravitation and get to an equation for g, then we just have to really rearrange that w equals mg for g equals. In other words, g is weight over mass, a force over a mass, so divide Newton's law by the mass, and again it's m2, it's the mass that's being accelerated, and you get this equation for g, gravitational field strength is g m1 over r squared. 
Again, that helps me understand what a field strength is. It's proportional to whatever the quantity is that causes the field, and it's an inverse square law, if in this case it's a radial field.